Welcome everyone to demo day for batch seven of Cello Camp. I am Matthew Kenny, program manager at Cello Camp, and joining me today is Alon Shavit, co-founder and managing director at Upright. Today, demo day is an exciting event where the entire community can come together to support the growth and accomplishment of new founders and builders in the ecosystem. For those new to Cello, Cello Camp is an eight-week virtual accelerator and mentorship program for the Cello ecosystem. And over the last two years, we've seen a considerable focus from our alumni on building impactful solutions on Cello. So they're looking to solve real world problems that can lead to sustainable, systemic, and positive changes. For today's event, you'll be hearing a three minute presentation from each of the 11 teams. And the order of the presentations is posted in the chat just now. After each team's three minute presentation, there will be a question from alone before we move on to the next presentation. We encourage you all to also utilize the Q&A and the chat feature on the right side of the screen to go ahead and ask questions that you might have for Teams and show any support. Just want to let a reminder that there are polls as well on the right side of the screen. We encourage you to go ahead and check out those polls. It looks sort of like a bar graph. Uh, and at the end of the show, the voting booth will be open for selecting your favorite teams. And that voting will be open for two hours. You all have a very important role to play. So please be sure to cast your votes at the end of this session. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and welcome our first speaker. Uh, it's going to be uh, Rafi from Denota. We're going to have Rafi from Denota joining us. Cool. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm You're calling right. in from uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. Uh, it's going well. Uh, Good again, to see you, Rafi. We're uh, Denota, and we're making Web3 payments uh, simple and secure through uh, NFT payment agreements. So payments today are incredibly inefficient. They're slow, they're expensive, and they have significant trust deficits that lead to hundreds of thousands of dollars in fraud and disputes. And we solve these issues with payments through our powerful on-chain uh, NFT primitive that makes payments uh, simple and straightforward, makes them low cost where you can mint a payment with secure agreements uh, for under a dollar across chain, and you can build in reputation, reducing fraud and uh, building in trust. So with our SDK, you can add extensible payments into your DAP with just a few clicks. So you can add things like sharing on NFT marketplaces uh, like OpenSea um, and add basic payment terms, really straightforward. Um, and as far as use cases, we're interested, especially in platforms and Web3 businesses. Uh, we're working on a pilot right now with a Web3 business where we're enabling uh, bridging, swapping, and batch payments for really simplified and automated payouts for them. And our SDK can be integrated in just a few lines of code. So let's take a uh, look at this demo here. Are you guys able to see the demo? Uh, let me, let me share my entire, there. I'll just share my entire desktop. Okay. There you are. So let's say I'm a, a developer on Cello building a freelance marketplace and I've heard about Devota and I'm taking a look at their docs and I want to add reversible payments to my marketplace. So I look at this reversible release module, um, and take a look at the snippet of code. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and then put it into my front end code. So now I can add this reversible uh, payment module into my DAP. So now going to the DAP, so this is our marketplace. So now um, we can create a Nota primitive, all powered by that module. We put payment details, the type of payment, and this is all on Cello's network. Select the recipient. And then here we can pick the specific mod module. So that's the reversible release. We can put details for that as well. And there we've created this uh, reversible payment that we can now avoid. So going back to the presentation. So our business model is focused on um, subscription plans that we offer for uh, businesses and individuals with different levels of support. Uh, transaction fees we actually share with our partners, um, yield generation and white label solutions. So yield generation means that we can actually generate yield while the payments are in escrow. Uh, our roadmap, we actually just closed our seed round with some excellent investors. 
Uh, we're building towards our mainnet launch and pilots with our partners. Uh, we're a highly technical team of Silicon Valley engineers and top data scientists. Um, and here's some of those excellent investors, including Celo. Uh, and right now we're looking for partners. So if you're a DAO, web your business or platform, uh, join us in uh, revolutionizing your payments. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Rafi. Rafi, for this awesome, awesome pitch. And can I uh, ask uh, a little more details about how your infrastructure uh, worked? Is it an uh, open source SDK that people can use? Do you also have like a, a web uh, service that um, uh, developers can uh, integrate to? So it is an open source SDK. So it's in JavaScript, so you can build it into your front end for your DAP. Super cool. And uh, so uh, you also run some sorts of nodes uh, in your infrastructure or um, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more about the structure? So we run uh, some nodes through, the, through Graph. Um, we don't do node hosting very much, but um, we have uh, graph nodes that we use, and as we scale, we want to have those graph nodes, uh, graph nodes available to be able to query uh, any of the uh, uh, contracts that you deploy. So any of the specific uh, notas and nota infrastructure that you have, uh, you'd be able to access through the front end uh, SDK. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rafi and the, the nota team bringing tooling to developers and uh, awesome job. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Great job, Rafi and the Nota team. Just uh, going to unmute you, Jacob, before you get started. And let us know where you're calling in from. Cool. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Jacob. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Lemonade, um, handling mostly operations and community. Um, currently based actually out of Tokyo, Tokyo and Japan, um, because you're meeting actually Sony Music um, this week at the headquarters. Um, yeah, this is Lemonade. Um, just one second. Yeah. The problem currently is for the creators that the user experience for them completely sucks. Um, there's not really a platform out there which super seamlessly bridges Web2 and Web2 free experiences. The user experience is really bad. You usually need five plus different platforms to host events, to have NFTs, um, yeah, to manage your community. And on top of it, you actually don't really own your own data. Solution is really simple, Lemonade. It's a one-stop shop where everyone can create their own Lemonade stand um, and build, scale, and monetize communities at scale through events, customer relationship management, loyalty programs, and also token-gated access to experiences. These are some of our results um, so far. So we have um, yeah, already onboarded more than 70,000 users. Um, we have connected um, more than 45,000 uh, wallets to our platform. Um, 230,000 POAPs have been minted on our platform. And we also generated approximately a revenue of $850,000, which actually mostly have been generated over the last uh, two quarters. Our platform, um, I just give you a live showcase. So this is Lemonade Social, where you have um, a decentralized timeline where community members, small, medium brands, creators can post whatever is on their mind. And then they can also create virtual rooms in real life experiences or virtual experiences like virtual blockchain conferences, for example, NFTs and co-ops. All of these co-ops are also multi-chain and obviously also co-ops are on Celo. Um, it's also possible to build apps, decentralized apps uh, on our protocol. So one of our clients, for example, is Budweiser, um, which is using our entire infrastructure to launch all of their um, events. And how they are using Lemonade is that they actually going to launch over the next one year, over 1 million NFTs. And everyone who has one of these NFTs on our platform, they actually can also redeem uh, free Budweiser yeah. drinks at the best years. <laughs> Last thing what I want to show you what we're currently working on is our lemon bot. Um, basically gives real power back to the economy and to the, of the creators because a lot of these tasks currently of managing events, creating communities and growing communities, it's, it's very redundant tasks. And all of these um, problems can actually be you know, used by AI. So just to also 
So this is just on staging right now, but the idea is actually people can just set up uh, events completely uh, on, on our Lemon board. Um, and then it should say that Lemonade is the solution to host all of your ticketing uh, on our platform. So just to give you an idea of what we're currently setting up and working on uh, to truly empower creators across the world. Thank you. Thank you so much to the Lemonade team. Uh, awesome job and like always really beautiful uh, user experience. And um, I want to uh, ask you, Jacob, uh, from your experience, what is the number one barrier that you see to uh, users like, that are more accustomed to Web2 solutions to enter the Web3 space? And I guess in the event, um, uh, kind of like a, a use case uh, from your experience. What I see in general um, in this space is that you still need to connect wallets and you need to have like cryptocurrency in your wallet, which then actually targets a very small group of people because still the market is really small and web free, right? And what we are doing very well, and that's also why we are collaborating with Budweiser and Bacardi, um, for example, is when people are joining events or experiences on our platform, it's a really seamless experience as a Web2 experience. And at the end, after you create an account, you actually receive automatically a co-op or an NFT. And then you can also redeem, obviously, the rewards of it. So every new user on our platform automatically gets assigned a Lemonade wallet and we cover all the gas fees. So again, this experience is completely seamless. And I think that's what's a little bit still lacking in the market. And that actually allows us to have 100% adoption rate. So even if a music festival of 20,000 plus people, we can literally onboard all of them because that experience is super seamless. Thank you so much, Jacob. Appreciate it. Thank awesome you guys. Pitch. Next up, I want to invite Robin from Evermore. Hello. All right, let me share my screen. Hi, everyone. I'm Robin, co-founder of Evermore. Evermore is a e-commerce platform that helps brands capture revenue from resale and keeps product out of the landfill. We do so by tokenizing physical consumer products, leveraging NFTs and smart contracts to decrease friction in resale and to create additional revenue streams from resale royalties. Evermore is built by an all-female team. I am a second time founder with 10 years in consumer retail, fashion, and I've brought to market and scaled over 15 projects in Web3. Flo is a third time technical founder. Uh, she spent seven years building an AI project and recently launched an NFT project and crowdfunding platform. We have spoken to consumer product companies across Asia, Europe, and the US, and problems we kept coming across were profitability and managing the customer's demand for sustainability. Evermore tackles this head on by unlocking re commerce for brands, helping them to grow revenue from resales while decreasing the environmental impact of their products. While these challenges are consistent across most consumer product verticals, we are starting with one of the largest contributors to waste, fashion. We're currently building out the Evermore product suite. We work with brands to create digital product passports that are NFTs that store real world product information, track change in ownership and attribute resale royalties back to merchants. Evermore's e-commerce marketplace is where a brand's community gathers to buy and resell a brand's products with each other. On the back end, our customer insights dashboard provides merchants data on product lifecycle and resale customers, which was previously not available. So I'm gonna walk through the demo. So as a, when a merchant comes to the Evermore platform, they will be able to connect to the, um, sorry, connect their Shopify e-commerce page via an API, which will pull all product and customer data. From the dashboard, they will be able to release product passwords and allow customers to claim product passwords by publishing this on Evermore, which will trigger the deployment of the smart contract on the Celo blockchain. It would upload the product metadata on IPFS, as well as generate a QR code which merchants will be able to attach to their product via these simple fabric tags. So you can go ahead and give it a try. If you scan this QR code, it will bring you to the product page 
where if you are the owner of the product, you will be able to claim the product passport. So this is what the product uh, page looks like, where you'll be able to learn more about the product, the brand, and you can click claim item. Once the item is claimed, you will be able to see them in your customer dashboard where you can manage your item or relist uh, for resale, which will then relist the product on the Evermore Marketplace as a resale item. So these royalties from resale increases a product's profitability by 40% while in decreasing the environmental impact by over 80%. Evermore takes 10% from every resale transaction to manage listings, shipping, payouts, while merchants take 10% in pure profit royalties. We are currently onboarding several merchants into our beta test slated for Q3, and we're raising a pre-seed round with a target of 500,000. Thank you for your time. And you know, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Robin. Another awesome pitch of a real world uh, use case solution. And this year's um, Earth Day, uh, one of, of, of the tenants was um, a renewable uh, fashion. So can you tell us a little bit about how your uh, solution can actually uh, contribute um, to those efforts? Yes, of course. So there were recent studies published where the most environmentally friendly thing to do with your consumer products is obviously you know, not to stop producing because as consumers, we're always going to need products, but it's actually to resell products, right? There's a study done where a single resale of a product actually decreases the environmental footprint by 82%. So on, on that tenant, based on that, that's where Evermore's principles are to really create this infrastructure for brands to actually be able to tap into this resale ecosystem, make it profitable for them to make products that last forever, that last much longer and continue to be resold. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robin. Awesome, awesome Thank project. you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robin, for the presentation. Next up, we're going to invite up Clement from Crystal Chain. Hey, Clement, how's it going? Where are you calling in from? Hey, I'm coming from uh, France. Nice to meet you. Um, so welcome to the Edge of Transparency. Crystal Chain is a company that has been founded uh, in 2016 uh, with the aim of doing the traceability of supply chain. Uh, sorry, I have a technical issue. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I'll do like this. So we're doing the traceability of supply chains in 2016 from a various sector, and we have more than 50 customers uh, from the luxury to uh, the food industry sector. So our vision is to help companies to reduce the carbon emissions. And for that, we have developed um, traceability software in seven years, uh, helping companies to reduce uh, the carbon emissions by traceability. And during the Silo Camp, we have developed Crystal Trade, which is a new product helping companies to uh, invest in traceful projects uh, by uh, and doing the compensation. Indeed, today in the voluntary carbon market, we are facing uh, three main issues. So the first one is that uh, we have no traceability around the value chain of a carbon project. The second one is that all the data uh, is scattered between different sources from email spreadsheets and therefore losing consistency. And of course, we can modify the data. Based on the three main issues, we have developed Crystal Trade. So Crystal Trade is the help of high integrity carbon projects aiming to do the full traceability around the carbon project, but also aggregating data from multiple sources from manual inputs to third parties like uh, satellite images or field softwares. And all of the data are, is immutable and cannot be changed. Crystal Trade is based on two pillars. So the first one is the traceability of projects and the second one, a marketplace showcasing projects. We are using, of course, uh, the blockchain technology and cello technology as the most developed ecosystem for the Web3 climate, NFTs uh, to make any project uh, unique, and IPFS to store high volume of data in a safe and secure way. Uh, so today we are onboarding more than 30 beta testers, uh, and every day we have new beta testers testing the solution, and we are working with international organizations. And we have a very um, uh, motivated team uh, working around that. So from uh, project developers, if we go on the on, on the platform today, uh, so we have launched the platform two weeks ago and every day new projects are creating and they can add as much information as they want. 
From a buyer perspective, they can have access to a wide range of different projects. And if they want to deep dive into a project, they can have a fully understanding of all the different uh, components of the project uh, up to the event traceability from the creation of the project to the issuance of the credits. And everything is on the blockchain, so fully transparent. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Clement. And, and I understand that your solution brings a, a traceability and the ability to um, actually have uh, on-chain data related to impactful uh, projects. So can you give us an example for kind of like the first go-to market um, use cases that you, you see for, um, for this uh, solution? Yeah, for sure. We are more focusing on the carbon removal uh, methodology. Uh, and currently, I'm uh, at the Biochar Summit in uh, Copenhagen. Uh, so I'm working uh, and uh, discussing a lot with project developers in the Biochar. And they are really, really interested in adding information on chain to bring more traceability and transparency uh, around the, the carbon projects. Because buyers want to avoid greenwashing. Uh, so we need to give as much information as possible uh, to, to, to give uh, credibility to these markets. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clement, Thank for you. this wonderful presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clement. And we are going to go ahead and pass it over to Sam from Ripe. Cool. So we're Ripe, and we let individuals use crypto like fiat. We're led by Chuck Lamb, PhD in electrical engineering in Stanford, and a serial entrepreneur with multiple exits, including one in the blockchain space and prior experience in crypto payments and compliance. Uh, I'm Sam Silver, and since my MBA at Oxford, uh, I've had a decade of operating experience in startups from pre-seed to Series C, and the two of us are both based in the Philippines. In crypto, particularly in emerging markets, we're seeing a number of burgeoning use cases. We're seeing more cross-border payments happening in crypto. We're seeing more earning crypto and Web3 ecosystems like GameFi, which is particularly popular here in the Philippines. And we're seeing more hold stable coins in inflationary economies. But while that's taking place, local merchants and small businesses still accept cash, uh, and e-wallets like Gcash, GrabPay, and Alipay. And those TradFi digital wallets have really proliferated in the last few years. Their growth over a short span is projected to be over 400%. Uh, this trend has been accelerated by the pandemic, which forced Southeast Asian economies to go cashless. And today in the Philippines, over 83% of adults use Gcash, despite the country being majority unbanked. To bridge this gap between crypto and how daily payments actually take place, there's RIPE. RIPE transfers crypto to the local currency and sends from DeFi applications like MetaMask and Valora to e-wallets like Gcash and others. So uh, I encourage everyone watching uh, to check out our demo on their smartphone by using this URL, uh, which allows you to make payments from your crypto wallet to any vendor that accepts Gcash. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a video of what you'll experience. So we use the QR scanner. You can use any merchant payment uh, QR on Gcash, enter the denomination that you want to pay, pay with Valora, Valora launches, and the denomination is pushed. And it's as simple as that. We're basically using crypto just like fiat. Oops, let's go back to the presentation. So it's important to stress that for merchants, there's no new requirement to adopt. Users pay with crypto and merchants receive the local currency. Uh, and comp uh, completing the transaction is, is just as they'd expect. Uh, we're currently working with PMs from Valora and Wallets on Stellar utilizing USDC uh, to integrate payments and off-ramping functionality more natively. Uh, moving forward, we have a roadmap uh, of other products to promote everyday payments with crypto uh, and the best possible user, user experience for off-ramping. Uh, so we were winners of the Celo and Huobi Stablecoin Web3 and Sustainability Hackathon, uh, winners of Stellar Community Fund Startup Camp, and to anyone on the call uh, with connections to crypto wallets, other DeFi applications, payment processing, we really appreciate the connection. And that's very, uh, and that's it. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. So uh, the question I have for uh, Ripe is, how is your solution uh, different from other uh, on and on of, I understand you focus on off-ramping, so how is it different than other uh, off-ramp solutions that are out there? So the two primary off-ramp solutions that we sort of see as competitors are Ramp and uh, MoonPay, uh, which both withdraw 
to a bank account. And that precludes a lot of Southeast Asia, considering that the uh, mass market is, is unbanked. Um, you know, furthermore, uh, the user experience and KYC is really onerous from uh, those entities because they sort of also presume that, that users are going to want to um, onboard and add currencies to wallets and, and other sort of custodial applications. And um, that exposes them to like much more regulatory surface area. And by really strictly being off-ramping uh, and inheriting our KYC from e-wallet partners like Gcash, um, we can offer like a, a much more expedient FASL solution. And so in our instance, it's just entering a phone number or scanning a QR, and that's it. We can have a one-page off-ramp uh, or payment. Uh, and, you know, in the case of those uh, competitors, it's, uh, you know, super uh, onerous and uh, really long user flow. Awesome. Really great. Thank you uh, so much. And uh, the ripe team. Thank you. Awesome, awesome demo and pitch. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone from Ripe. I'm going to go ahead and invite up Ryan from Provide Eco. Hi, all. This is Ryan from Provide. And uh, let me share my screen very quickly here. OK, so my name is Ryan. I'm from Provide. And I'm dialing in from, from Michigan, USA, uh, the high five state or the Great Lakes state. And I'm the developer evangelist and SAP architect. And you know, my background really weaves through deeply into supply chain and to ERP systems across you know, several different industries. And you know, one issue that is most important to the Fortune 500 today is their carbon emissions. So both from a voluntary and regulatory standpoint, there's a lot of pressure to reduce emissions based on the billions of emissions that uh, these large companies have collectively. Uh, often they're headquartered in, in nations where they, they have to take action, uh, as well as challenges with scope three emissions, which are emissions that are further out from the value chain. And you know, how do you address that? You can invest in carbon offsets, you can reduce emissions and report on data, but there's challenges with that. Uh, and Provide Eco is meant to simplify and accelerate the way companies can invest in sustainability and improve how they operate on their net zero data with APIs. So hitting on our demo, there's just a few things we'll, we'll talk about today. The API resource hub, some demo apps we've built with SAP, as well as a few other things about our tooling with Shuttle. Uh, so first of all is this uh, Eco API resource hub. We have a Postman collection where you are welcome to interact with these APIs and uh, it just presents a very simplified Web2 style API. You can integrate to any system, uh, such as you could do it in JavaScript, you could do it in SAP, you could do it in .NET. And uh, that's, a, that's a very quick look at uh, you know, either through Postman on the left, which is a common API test tool, and then on the right uh, with, with JavaScript, as well as our SAP demo apps, right? Uh, so why SAP? in particular, it's a number of folks may not be familiar with this, but uh, all of the major large corporations that, that, that have these emissions data, their operational data of supply chain finance sustainability for their purchase orders, manufacturing, that resides out of SAP in particular. And uh, here's my app in SAP, for, in, for example, and I have some flight data out of SAP. I can select uh, getting some carbon aggregation here, and select retire carbon. And notice this is, this is a very different user experience. This isn't necessarily web, web two style. Um, this isn't a web three user experience. This is very much a web two enterprise one. This is the Fiori native user experience here. Uh, taking a look at it again, if I wanted to do it simply through JavaScript, that's uh, supported as well. So you can see that happening live over here. And uh, another aspect of this, in addition to just being able to purchase offsets through the API, uh, we also do something with zero knowledge. And uh, this is enabled by our, 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 our Axiom API suite. And you can see here, I can take this payload of data. That's the underlying business transaction data. Things I wouldn't necessarily want to put directly on chain, but I want to verify on chain. And that can generate a zero knowledge proof based on how this is composed. 
central to that is shuttle, right? And we thought about how to aggressively make the uh, learning curve of zero knowledge a much lower barrier of entry. And if I look at this workflow designer, you can see all I really had to do was specify what kind of data schema was involved and you know what kind of ZK circuit is there. And these are ZK proofs that are agnostic of any platform, but you could use these ZK proofs in terms of emissions NFTs on Celo or, or, or other ecosystems. And that's great for interoperability cross change as well with, with zero knowledge. Going back to my slides here, uh, I talked a bit about shuttle there a moment. You know, really what we're, we're trying to do as well with, with uh, the, the, the fiat integration is this user does not have to hold any kind of stable coins in their wallet at all. And there's even no private key that needs to be managed inside of these applications to, to decrease the threat service. You know, through a, through use of account abstraction, like ECO will actually fund those transactions as that's taking place. And our business model is built on, you know, tracking that usage through our stack and then invoicing that user whom we can KYC, KYB, and, uh, you know, minting new stable coins to replenish the pool. And uh, before I go much further, I should go over here and actually show you uh, the transactions we were just able to create on Celo, uh, just on the testnet, we're awaiting some new deployments on Toucan uh, to deploy their offset helper contract there uh, as soon as that's available. But this is just a dummy contract for the moment. And we're also live on um, uh, Polygon as well. So coming back to here, that's that's all about us right there. And uh, why Celo, we, we, we chose to build on Celo because of the, the fast growing refi ecosystem the, the day one commitment to, to, to net zero planet positivity. That's a huge attraction to corporates because some of the biggest aversions to blockchains are environmental, right? And of course the low fees and EVM compatibility made it easiest to build here. So that's all for me. Uh, any questions about what we just shared? Great presentation and bringing uh, ZK uh, solutions. So I, I would love to, uh, here an example of how uh, or why a business might want to use uh, ZK proofs uh, as part of his uh, solution suite. Absolutely. So if, if you're putting your business transaction data, the su supply chain operational data on chain, it allows, it, it could allow for your competitors to snoop on you, right? Well, zero knowledge can help solve for that by concealing that in a cryptographically secure way where you and your business partners can still verify that information together, uh, but it's it's free from the prying eyes in that way. Uh, it also is a great integration pattern by making data very succinct, right? The same idea that we have ZK rollups for you know large transactions on blockchains that applies to business data uh, here as well. So you can ZK roll up this data and, and really bring it down to a single verification to understand like, hey, my data that I have in my enterprise system is the same as yours, right? And you could extend that into use cases of supply chain where someone's not con directly connected to your, to your enterprise system, but they have a bill of lading or some other document and they need to verify that's correct. So that's another aspect of the value of zero knowledge in these cases. It's precision and privacy as I, as I often tell people. Awesome, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. And the awesome. Provide Eco team. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. We're going to go ahead and pass it over to Felipe. So hi, everyone. My name is Felipe Vega calling in from uh, Lisbon, Portugal, and uh, CEO and co-founder at WallID. And it's a huge pleasure to, to be here with you showing what we've built on camp and also to talk a little bit about um, WallID. So at WallID, we're focused on uh, solving the problems of Web3 adoption. So, we all know that uh, onboarding experience today sucks. We know that the app developers uh, face a lot of regulatory uncertainty and last couple of weeks have proven that as quite all right, I guess. And uh, we also know that it's hard to provide trust between users and developers amongst Web3 ecosystems. So 
One of the, the main reasons in our understanding for that is the lack of standards and interoperability between verifiable data sources and eventually also ID providers. And at Wall ID, we solve this problem by abstracting the complexity of connecting to multiple verifiable data sources and ID, and ID providers in order to either verify or prove the ownership um, over data on those infrastructures. But Better than talking about it is probably showing what Wall ID could do for you uh, as a developer. So let's do a little bit of role playing. Let's assume I have a DAO and I'm about to launch uh, this NFT collection. And I want to reward my the most loyal members of our community with some of the rarest NFTs in the collection. But I also want to make sure that one person gets, in this case, only one NFT as, as a reward. So all I have to do is to log into Wall ID's uh, dashboard, and I'm going to select the Cello blockchain. That's where uh, I have the tokens of my DAO. I'm going to paste here the, the address of my smart contract, and I'm going to set up this minimum amount of 1,000 tokens for someone to be eligible. Now, to make this simple, I'm just going to select Twitter, and I'm going to make it uh, mandatory for someone to verify the account in order to ensure that civil resistance that, that someone is not getting more than uh, one NFT. So I get this piece of code, I'm going to export it, put it into my website, and now looking at it from a user standpoint, this is what happens. So I'm going to go here and claim and see if I am um, eligible to, to claim my NFT. So while like this process is going to be triggered, this is what was embedded uh, in the developer's website. So first thing, I'm going to connect my Twitter account, I'm going to authorize it. And next step here, I'm on the browser. I'm going to connect my seller wallet and allow the verification to proceed and see if I've got more than 1,000 tokens of this DAO. And that's it, pretty much success. And I can now uh, go move forward and claim the, the NFT that's, that's waiting for me. So that's it from the demo. And we're uh, this team of four people, two co-founders who left the government, the government digital ID space uh, to build this team and to come and bring self-sovereignty, uh, easy to use self-sovereignty into the Web3. And we're now fundraising. So if you want to know about our plans for the future, hit me up. That's, there's my email over there. And also if you're a developer on Celo, hit us up uh, in case you want to know more how we can help you with your authentication and that data verification flows. And that's it. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you so much, Philip, for this uh, great, great presentation. And uh, WallID is building uh, kind of like a workflow uh, infrastructure tool. Uh, can you tell us uh, on other use cases that uh, developers um, uh, can, can use WallID for? Yeah, for in, uh, out of this out of this space. So uh, in we are we are coming into Zelda. So I'm going to give you examples of other ecosystems. One in the Web3 space. So in the near blockchain, they use the same system to uh, award royalties to users that do not have a wallet within uh, near as well. So they set up this flow. They verify the same criteria that they have on their on their on their site. And then they award the wallet and onboard users after a verification flow like this that that you have seen here. Another use case in the Web2. DocuSign uses our verification flow to allow Web3 wallets uh, to sign documents and then to mint an NFT as proof of signature. So with us, you can pretty much build authentication flows based on social logins and Web3 wallets and data verification flows based on legacy and governmental digital IDs and also uh, Web3 IDs and Web3 uh, data sets. Uh, so, yeah, then you can do, in this case, it was a gated access to an airdrop, but you can do it for many other purposes. Thank you so much, Philippe, for right, this wonderful you. presentation. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Felipe and the Wally ID team. Next up, we're going to invite up Luis from Stix. Hey, Luis, how's it going? Where are you calling in from? Hi, everyone. I'm calling in from Spain at the moment and thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. Okay, here we go. So my name is Luis, uh, again from Stakes and we build for uh, enabling music and creative economies on Web3. So please meet Radio Geist, who we recently met as a recent uh, band, rock band, as you can see, 
And we teamed up with them because they wanted to release their next single, Out of the Bridge. Now, as most creatives we meet, radio guys came with us with a problem to solve. They needed upfront financing, and I underline upfront, in order to, re to record and then release their single, Under the Bridge. And in addition to that, we also see a problem, especially in the early days of any artist's career, any creator's career, where you need proximity to your fans. And this is something streaming platforms and digital platform service providers are not exactly servicing. Our solution was to help radio guys find their 1,000 true fans, allowing them to acquire shares in the form of tokens for their single. This allowed us not only to fund their single before it's released, but also to share the success with their fans and collectors, setting up the stage for Radio Guy's future drops and also for their community. Stakes makes this easy through four simple steps through our DAG. First, we define together with Radio Guys how many tokens they wish to mint. This would be the supply. Then how many, uh, what would be the price of these tokens and how many they wish to keep and how many they sell. Perhaps they want to keep it for collapse or just for internal purposes. Now, once we're happy with that, we go ahead and publish this on the stakes app, which is how fans can go ahead and interact with their um, single or token release. So this is deployed, this is our demo going live here in Alpha Horus. And yeah, we can connect to any one of the available wallets, going for MetaMask for now. And you can see our marketplace just last page. I'm going into the detail page for the, the single at the moment. So here in this page, you'll be able to find just a rough overview. What is it that you're going to get? What is the utility behind it? And everything about the artist. Now, once I'm happy with this production as a fan or collector, I go ahead and choose how many tokens I wish to acquire. And we sweeten the deal by giving them perks to choose from based on, uh, yeah, basically how many tokens they uh, want to purchase. Here are the perks. And this is the incentive system in order to uh, bring more uh, token buyers or have them buy more tokens. You can see it's also uh, denominated in seller euros. So uh, I can choose that or any other ERC20 token, shall I wish to do that, if I want to den denominate our production into that. And yeah, the checkout process, as you can see here, well, it wants me to select the perk. Sorry about that. Right. Never forget your perk and stakes. These are valuable. And here it is. Yeah, once it's a double step process similar to a swap where I'll first approve, then I'll go ahead and purchase a token. I'll do that live now. Yeah, denominated in uh, solo euros, and it's currently uh, validated in the transaction now. Now I see it completed. Yeah, and it should be visible here in just a second. Now, as soon as this transaction is validated, artists can immediately withdraw their funds. So this provides the instant financing. And then on the collector side, they can choose what they wish to do. They may want to collect because they have, yeah, token uh, gated access or unique content for their artists, perhaps because they want to earn from royalties and ticket sales, which is typically what our tokens carry. As you can see here in my confirmation page on the demo again, I can see how many tokens I have, the purchase price. And soon, as soon as we have, uh, yeah, ticket sales or royalties, we'll be able to redeem those through the DAP. Or also, if you want to cash out early, we can sell and in secondary markets. But we want to take this further. We envision helping creators become real world asset providers in this new DeFi space and real world uh, intersection between creative industries. So this means if we believe that music is valuable and we can all agree on such value, if, this, if we can turn this into collateral then in Web3 and we can uh, generate or incentivize with regenerative, regenerative access actions, for example, into the LTV, which would be the term of the loan. And yeah, you might have noticed George from Radio Guys in the first slide. He's wearing this very interesting t-shirt, you no know, music on a dead planet. And these are the sort of, uh, precisely the sort of associations behind our, the artists. So there's many dots to connect to create regenerative action flywheels in the underlying audiences of these uh, very interesting artists and creatives. This is some of our tech and music partner ecosystem at the moment. So we are deployed on Polygon, Ethereum, and now on Alpha Horus very soon on Mainnet, also in Solo Mainnet. And we also, our, our music uh, partners are mostly in these uh, labels, artists, promoters. These are some of our traction uh, numbers, uh, uh, almost 
have almost managed to achieve 70,000 euros in token sales, help more than 25 productions, back 32, uh, uh, more than 32 artists. And we have a uh, 2000 strong community supporting this. This is our uh, team, mostly myself with background in business uh, in finance, excuse me, and Tom and, and Martin, our CTO and lead engineers, help us all our, all our ideas come to life. We've been building together for four years. We're also backed by a uh, team of advisors and team uh, members from all over the world, a diverse team from many countries. Uh, yeah, we won't have time to go into that, but thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you in our community. We're looking for artists, creators, curious, and definitely <clears throat> investors helping in our round. Thank you so much for being here. Woohoo, Luis, thank you so much. That was fun. <clears throat> and if you can uh, unshare your screen. So, um, Supporting artists and uh, uh, creators, musicians. So understand that your uh, solution covers both um, events and uh, also a music production. So you're actually um, trying to uh, to have a comprehensive uh, um, solution here. So can you uh, tell us uh, uh, in your go-to market, like uh, the first use cases that you are gonna uh, implement? Uh, what do you think uh, those uh, might be? Would you be more focused on events, uh, more on the uh, music production, or is it like uh, the whole package? So that's that's a good question because currently we we are used to seeing music in two different live and recorded music coming to your question in two different spaces. Now what Web three allows is combining those which either way is behind the same creators typically, and we can streamline that, let's say digital economy into related tokens. So currently we're focusing on these two specific uh, drops, mostly making deals with labels in a B2B fashion with those uh, partners that we just uh, showed on screen. And this allows us to have access to the royalty, the repertoire owners, the music rights. Uh, you know, in its current state, which is still not completely Web3. And on the other side, we're also teaming up with promoters, which allows us to streamline then ticket sales. So these come from the ticketing uh, companies, which we can also, we also envision those coming into Web3, those uh, revenue um, outputs coming into Web3 very soon. We're ready for that and we're going to build it. Thank you so much, Luis. Great presentation and awesome job with the live demo. Awesome, thank you so much, Lewis and the Stakes team. Next up, we have Paula from Symbiotica. Hey, Paula, how's it going? Where are you calling in from? Hi, everyone. Great job, Lewis. I'm a fan of Stakes and also a fan of all the projects here. I'm uh, speaking from Italy today. Our team is shared among Italy, Brazil, and United States. And yeah, happy to kick it off. One second. Okay, here we are. We are Symbiotica Finance Team, guys. Hello, the world first Web3 Impact Aggregator. And I am Paula Palermo. I'm here today to represent this amazing team that combines together 15 plus years of impact experience, leading positions in Cointelegraph in Brazil, 12 plus years in experience in software development and for fintechs and also blockchain applications, strong regulatory and technical skills on ecology, land use management, environmental law and sustainability compliance. Yeah. We are working here in the intersection of ESG and crypto, which together represent already a market worth of $150 billion plus. Um, and this market is just growing, but it's also growing a concern on climate-related risks and the sustainability status of those portfolios. And what is happening? The absence of standardization for the data and also the challenges in disclosing the impact are top concerns for both industries. And it's very hard to find cryptocurrencies with a positive impact. And generally, the impact industry is no different. Also, it's hard to trust. Impact companies are overlooked and cryptocurrencies are normally associated with scams. And it's also very hard to disclose. ESG measurement and metrics, they are getting complicated and it's a problem for investors and assets managers in general. How do we solve those problems? 
you can already find on our website, you can go to symbiotica.finance, a list of impact assets and solutions. And our secret sauce here is our framework, impact ratings framework that allows impact ratings for cryptocurrencies and also helps us to create disclosure reports for on and off chain impact. And this is the MVP that we developed during Celo Camp, and I will showcase for you guys right now. So you first need to select the most valuable indicators that you need to track based on your impact goals and objectives. Let's talk as we are an impact fund. Then you'll be able also to integrate other additional data feeds and give the directions to verify this impact. Then you connect your wallet and verify your email and submit your report. When your report is submitted, you can gain insights from impact metrics. You can visualize it, prove it, and share it all on chain. And also our platform allows you to manage the impact information that is crucial for your portfolio with automatic on-chain uh, reports all in one place. And also our go-to-market is very simple and uh, the Celo ecosystem is where we start. Uh, our impact analytics solution is already available for any institution or individuals willing to learn more about positive impact uh, market. We also provide premium features with robust impact assessment and risk analysis tools. And with the MVP that we developed here during Celo Camp, we are ready to pilot with four funds from Brazil, impact funds that combine together 100 billion plus of assets under management. Uh, this is our progress so far. We made 130K uh, plus in revenue since incorporation, which was last year, with grants from, from Cello Foundation, Climate Collective, and Filecoin Green. And we received support for Web2 and Web3 renowned institutions and got featured in World Top Tech uh, new News Portal. Do not forget to reach out to learn more about our work and please vote on us. And it's time to bring positive impact to the moon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Paula, and great energies and support to other teams throughout uh, camp. So uh, uh, really, really uh, appreciate that. And can you tell us a little bit more about um, uh, the importance of uh, on-chain uh, verifiable data for the refi uh, space? Uh, I know you mentioned it and I know it's like a core a, a value add in your product. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, Alon, uh, that's where actually we start. We see that many impact refi projects, they, they are promoting an impact. They want to promote a positive impact. But when we try to assess the smart contracts to see this impact happening, we couldn't find many information. So we, we want here to bring this framework to help us users, investors, and asset managers to identify the positive impact that is happening, also to manage some risks that are related to those digital assets. And we want to have this information all on chain, and also you can assess also the impact ratings. And this, you can also go to our website. You can see that we already have some ratings there, including for Celo, and we'll be disclosing that framework very soon. But uh, this is the, the challenge that we face it as individual investors to look for those assets. Among 22,000 cryptocurrencies, it's really hard to find where uh, real impact really sits. Really, really great. Thank you so much, Paula. And I can't wait uh, to use your product and uh, invite everyone to check out Symbiotica. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alon. Bye-bye, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Paolo. Going to invite up next, Derek from ClixPesa. Hey, Derek, how's it going? Where are you calling in from? My, hello, everyone. The going's good. I'm calling in from Nairobi, Kenya. So I hope you can see my screen already. Yes, yes, we can. Yep, so this is uh, Derek Kachisa from Clickspesa, and our aim here is to make money in crypto simple for everyone. Now, financial products in Africa are really underutilized with only 16% of mobile accounts being active. Now, our approach to try and solve this problem is we want to design for needs while keeping things very simple. And coming from Kenya, we know that making and receiving payments is not enough to build financial resilience and inclusion. So our solution revolves around one platform, All Things Money and Crypto, and it's going to be available both on your smartphone and the USSD channel. Now here is where Wanjiku, a food vendor, for example, can be able to create Hachama or Roska as it's known, in order to be able to contribute monthly and later try to get a lump sum in order to 
maybe invest or expand into her business. And since Roscas are based on rotational savings, while she's waiting for her round, she can tap into our peer-to-peer -peer feature. And we added this feature because we saw that it it's a, a, adds a big chance to the alternative lending market. And here, Wanjiko can be able to get a soft loan from her peers at her own terms. Now we are going to go through a small demo, hopefully of our platform. And here, uh, it's going to be revolved around a mobile wallet where you will just be able to log in, see your current balance and the recent transactions that you have had recently. So these are the transactions. And then uh, the savings are called spaces on our platform. So we can have personal savings, challenges where you can save, challenge yourselves with your friends, and then groups where we even have the Roscas. Also, we have the loans tab where you can be able to see the different loans that you have, uh, the offers that people have put up for you to borrow. And if you do not see an offer that matches uh, your terms, you can be able to request the community to lend you that loan. Now, coming into during camp, we were trying to integrate this loans feature into the Roscas, and that's going to be the focus of this demo so that when Wanjiku comes in, she's able to see uh, some details about the Rosca that she's in, uh, which will load up. And once people are contributing on the round, they will see the progress here. And then can also be able to see the current loans that are being borrowed within uh, the Rosca or Chama and also add offers and requests. We also saw the need to add what we call pockets. And this is whereby when Wanjiku has something of need uh, of money need and does not want to maybe pay interest and think that her friends can help, they are going to be able to create a pocket and then people are just going to contribute here and she can use it for that particular goal. Now we are going to try and create a simple Roscar so that we can see some activity on chain. And we're going to call this Sherehe, meaning some party. And you're going to invite some of your friends. Your friends will receive an SMS to join this uh, Roska uh, later. And you can be able to set the goal amount that you want to save with your friends, let's say 50. And once you put this amount, it's going to be distributed among you and everyone has to contribute this on this particular uh, schedule that you choose. And then that amount is going to be dispersed to someone uh, later uh, during that week. And so we're going to say okay and try to create this. Okay, so basically what happens when you create this Roscar, it's going to create uh, this Roscar onto this uh, spaces contract and we are going to see some activity here. So this is where everything is going to be saved for Anjiko to follow at her own pace. Now uh, we have had them um, an interesting journey. And we started this project last year at the Web3 Hackathon where we became the Web3 standout. We later joined the Build with Cello Hackathon where we scooped the top prize under the DeFi theme. And then through Cello Camp Startup Pathway Program, we were also the World Card winner. And that's how we managed to land here at Camp. Now, this has been your team, Derek uh, for product, Samuel Moy for technology and engineering, and Cecilia Njoroge, who has been instrumental in shaping our financial uh, planning. That's all from Clickspesa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. And it's really uh, beautiful to see your continuous uh, work on the project. And uh, I think you are really bringing uh, new ideas uh, into the space. And can you tell us a little bit more about the Roska and Chama uh, uh, kind of like uh, funding groups that you uh, mentioned and, and how people are doing that today with uh, kind of like uh, the traditional tools? So yeah, Roskas here in Kenya are known as Chamas and they are enshrined in uh, our traditional financial setting because we believe that communities can help each other. And so people around our community come together uh, when they have maybe a similar goal or they just want to, to help themselves financially, you can set a timeline where you, if someone has a goal, you would contribute towards that person's goal. Maybe they want to renovate their house or they are trying to just set up a business, you will contribute to them. Now, the reason we are starting with this is because this has always been manually and we have had also uh, trust issues within the community where since they elect someone to hold their funds for them during this collection period. Sometimes they might have what we call flight of funds, where this member 
maybe relocates to another town and then we have issues following up on the money. So we think that having this on the platform and on chain is going to bring that transparency, remove the issues of trust, and anyone can be able to save from any part of the world as long as they do know uh, this particular community. Yeah. Thank you so much, Derek. And uh, really, really fascinating and an awesome uh, demo. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Derek. And next up, we have Emiliano from Raiz. Hey there, lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. So at Raiz, we are building a decentralized food system, changing the way we connect and grow our food. Climate change is making it hard to feed the plant. We have rising population, a lot of waste, extreme weather events, droughts. So we need to readdress how we are actually consuming and growing what, what we eat. So at Raiz, we're creating a decentralized and resilient food system. We see a rise in demand for local food production, and we're addressing that through blending nature and technology. So we have a hybrid farm in Lisbon that's using its own renewable energy to grow crops all through the year. And we're launching a modular biodegradable farm wall so that communities can grow their own food indoors and outdoors. So we're effectively growing fresh local food consistently, most importantly, using less resources. So less water, less space, of course, zero pesticides and lower carbon emissions from a long supply chain. So in, in one sense, we're also using our own renewable energy, which allows us to run profitably and at a lower cost. Now, where does Celo, where does Refi fit in? So two main areas. One of them is financing. So vertical farms have a high capex. And why don't we actually decentralize the investment of this? How can we uh, reap this technology in the way that it allows people worldwide to have an upside in this climate positive and cash flow positive farms? And the other one is a traceability protocol that allows us to actually apply DMRV solutions and accounting methodologies so that we can really trace and have a verifiable source of trust in terms of water, energy, and land. So this opens the doors for uh, scaling up the vertical farming network. And on the other hand, it's a massive opportunity to onboard people from Web2 and general community that just like you and me need to, to eat their veggies. Now, during uh, Cell Camp, we focused on developing the, the core MVP. This is just a, a little taste of what we could do with this operating Lisbon farm. So people can actually uh, co-own uh, one spot of the farms. We know that actually the, the impact being generated here is more important for the users. This is already deployed in the, in the test net, thanks to our mentors and uh, dev team. And then you can basically uh, invest in one of these and after being approved, you can actually know uh, that you are growing your impact and your profit, and you can just follow uh, the link to, to see the transactions and actually be effectively now of a new food system. And I'll just give you a very quick uh, sneak peek. This is the insights uh, backstage of the um, vertical farm in Lisbon, which would be glad to host anyone that's in the city. And uh, again, it's saving water, uh, carbon, and growing nutritious food for the communities. Now, we're excited about uh, keeping collaborating with our friends in the ecosystem to bring vertical farming impact on chain, to apply gamification methods and make this investable digital assets more accessible. And most importantly, to channel capital and beyond capital, these food production hubs to where it matters most. We know uh, there's communities in need that really face food security issues. So we can really make uh, a beautiful economy backed by this climate positive and cash flow positive assets. Now, in terms of traction, we've again launched this um, farm. We've uh, reached uh, a high growth in, in the last year, have already uh, hundreds of customers in the pipeline and, and already existing here with this farm. We have new farms in the waiting list, the farm walls, and we have uh, secured the supply chain to launch this um, new version of a container farm that we are really excited to be uh, deploying in the next couple of months and, and years to reach our vision uh, of a world full of, of climate positive farms, helping us achieve our mission of solving world hunger, bringing nature back into the cities and achieving communities that have food security throughout their future. Hopefully we can do it with Celo, we're actively racing, so it would be uh, lovely to speak with investors here. And just for anyone looking for partnerships, uh, further uh, collaborations, we're always open to do that and really appreciate this opportunity. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emiliano. And what a great uh, way to wrap up our uh, demos. And uh, you're talking to us right from the farm, right? Can you yeah. show again the, uh, the, the, the background there? It's like uh, really, really beautiful. Sure. And uh, sure. they have some veggies, quite a bit of herbs, mustard, dill, and <laughs> a wide variety of, of crops. We're able to expand the variety and grow like nutritious crops for, for people. Really, really awesome. And I wanted to ask you uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more about how uh, on-chain data or what kind of on-chain data uh, these uh, vertical farms produce and, and, and how blockchain uh, can, um, can help that, can support that and bring in more transparency. transparency. Totally. So uh, the key criteria in terms of controlled environment are... Uh, humidity, temperature, uh, of course, food production, and then the energy consumed and the, and the carbon avoided. That, of course, takes a whole life cycle assessment in terms of the carbon and the benchmark that we're comparing. Uh, and that's, I would say, the, the first key uh, angle that blockchain would be able to help us have a, a verifiable, verifiable source of trust and avoid greenwashing that has been done in the industry um, and also incentivize other players in the vertical farming space to abide by these uh, methodologies. Um, that's one of them. Um, also, of course, there's the economical data in terms of how um, much we are producing and selling. That would also be interesting for anyone participating in our network. But in terms of climate, I would say, again, it's uh, water, energy, land. That's um, all coming together to avoid uh, wasting resources and growing more food with less. Uh, thank you so much, Emiliano and the Rays team for presenting. And thank you so much to all of the Cello Camp uh, presenters today and all the teams throughout Cello Camp. I'd love for everybody to give a round of applause, you know, drop uh, reactions in the chat, emoticons, all that. It's really incredible that you all have joined us here today.